Okay, this is the below elbow back slab that we're about to do. So we just need to make sure that we remove any jewellery, please. Just, and any ECG tabs that may be left on the limb. Now that's, oh lovely, we got that off quite no problem. Thank you. You're right. So the below elbow, we just need to make sure that we have two to three finger width um, space there from the elbow crease so that when you put them into a sling it's not going to affect the circulation and also that the cast comes down just on and sits just below the knuckle line here so that we've got free movement of all fingers. Okay so we'll get the surgery fix, um, not surgery fix, stock in there and you measure from the tips of the fingers to just past the elbow crease and that will give you enough to use. Um, we'll put that on and then we'll need to make a hole for the thumb. So if we just slide that on, okay. And that comes right down to the fingertips and then we can just at the base of the thumb, just put a piece of the sock out and do a little nick like that for the thumb to go through. Brilliant. And then we do our little famous cheese slice on the end here. And that enables us to then, when the cast is done, that we can turn it back and it will go around the thumb neatly. Right, so then the soft band is, we'll use the middle size, not the full size, because otherwise you'll have trouble getting it around the wrist. Okay and let me do that. So we just take the edge off because otherwise the soft band doesn't stick to itself and it just gives it a smoother finish and helps with your application. So you just take the end off and then right near the elbow crease you can do two layers. Okay, two layers and then you drop it by 50% so that every rotation has two layers. Work your way down the arm. At this point, we can get you to rest on your elbow just to give you a bit more comfort. And then we get round to the web space. So we'll need to come through that and you can't come all the way down without cutting it because otherwise you've covered the fingers. So you need to tear it to halfway across the soft band. So it sits neatly and then it goes around the back across the knuckles. Okay, and you do that twice. So tear again, through, cross the knuckle line, and then you can come back up just to tuck all these um, loose ends in. And that is it, and then tear it. Because when you tear it, again, as I said earlier, it will then sit neatly without falling away. And we'll just rest your arm down now. Now we're ready for the plaster. Okay, so the Plaster, you need to check your size that you're going to choose. Um, this is the widest size, a 20 centimetre, that's a 15. Um, for Sarah here, I think to make sure we get like a two thirds coverage of the limb, we're going to use the 20. Okay. And that's the idea of your back slab, it just goes on the back, but tucks round the radius and the ulna so that if you have either a fracture of the radius or ulna, both is covered. So where the knuckles are, you just need to bring it a little bit short of your soft band by one to two centimetres, and the same the other end, one to two centimetres shorter, so that when we fold everything back, it's not, too, not going to get too close to that elbow crease. Right, so we've got our measurement, and we're then going to do between six and eight layers is safe to do. So that's three, four, five, six. Okay. If you think they're going to be up to no good and using it a lot, then you might want to put eight on. But someone who's elderly, six layers is plenty. Okay. We're then going to do the, what we call either a church door or an arch and you only need it one to two centimetres away from the edge of the plaster. So we're going to make this arch here, as you will see. 
All right, like that, because that is the piece that's going to sit into the palm crease. Okay, then we just take the corners off, all the corners so it sits again without any sharp areas. And that is our slab ready to put on. We also, um, before you start your application, do another two layer piece, which will go on top of the bandage to secure the bandage on. We don't tend to use tape because it just gets wet and it will fall off. So that's a little piece, two layers ready to go on the end. And you need your bandage. And the bandage, I would probably use the middle size, again, because the big one will be far too big to get around the wrist. So you're fine if you want to use either one of these sizes. Okay, have that all ready. And then all your materials are here, ready to go. Everything you need, the slab, the bandage, and the, your little piece to secure the, your bandage. Okay, I'm then gonna put gloves on because you get plaster everywhere. <laughs> here we go. So we've prepared some water here, which is just lukewarm. Okay, and then we fold the slab. It's um, more appropriate when you're doing it like a below knee because it's longer. So you fold it in like a book shape with all your fingers behind and only the thumb and index holding the, the ends of the plaster so that you're in full control when you then open it back out. So that goes into the water, let all the bubbles disperse, take it out and then you do a little squeeze at the top, a little squeeze at the bottom, not through the middle just so that it's still wet enough and it gives you time to apply the plaster without getting into any predicaments of it drying out too quick. Okay, so then you can carry that slab over to your patient, lay it on the back, and then we just place this piece that goes into the palm crease first, so that's neatly into the palm, and then we can move this piece of plaster to ensure that you cover the radius and the ulna. And that's then enough to go all the way round, two thirds of the way round. And as you can see underneath, it's left a nice decent space there to allow any swelling to settle itself down. Okay, so then we now fold the ends back and then we've got our nice two to three finger width there. That's the space, which is good. And we fold this end back and that neatly goes around the thumb. That, again, when you bend your fingers, Sarah, please, that we can just see the knuckle line there and the cast is free of the knuckles, so lovely movement of the fingers. Okay, brilliant. Make sure the cast is in a neutral position or with a very, very slight bit of extension so that when you're looking down on it, you can see it straight it's in a neutral alignment. We don't want any flexion of the wrist, a neutral line or even a little tiny bit of extension to the wrist. I do just wet my hands at this point because otherwise the cast dries. And... <laughs> right, bandage. So again, we do the same as we did with the soft band. You go twice round, but quite firm, okay? Otherwise it will get too baggy. So you pull the bandage to full extension and then release by about 10% and over you go. So full extension, release slightly, and then you get the same conformity throughout the whole slab. And as we approach this web space again, we need a little pair, normally the green scissors is better, to make a, a hole here. So you lay it across the thumb, that's where you're gonna need your hole. So you can make a hole there for the thumb, okay, that goes over, brilliant, and you can do that twice, so we go around and do that again, over the top, work out where you need to do your hole, and that's good, that goes over, 
and then back down the arm, finishing on the back where your slab is. You mustn't finish it where there's a soft area, otherwise your piece that's going to go on now to hold the bandage down will end up making it into a full plaster if you put it on the underside. If you hold this in your hand like this, take the ends of the cast and then it can just go straight over. Okay, so that's just sitting on the top where your plaster is because it's soft under this side so you don't want it that side otherwise you're completing that into a full cast. Right, just check that everything's moulded nicely and sits into the palm. Great, and we're all done. You can just use a little bit of the soft fan, wet it in your water and use that as your little mop to clean all the fingers, clean your patient up ready to put a sling on okay because they'll need to go we need to um, remind the patient to move fingers regularly it's good exercise at home elbow and to not wear the sling at night but during the day just to ensure you don't get sweat into the fingers okay that's great thank you just ensure that when you um, cut out your plaster of paris for this slab, for the below elbow, make sure it does come past the ulnar styloid. So that's the knobbly styloid part of your wrist. So ensure that it comes up past that so that it stops any, if there's a slight rotation in that plaster, then it's not going to rub against the styloid. Okay? So we're now going to show you a volar slab. A volar slab means that it goes on the palm side of the hand and wrist, okay? And the volar slab is a slab that's going to come extend all the way to the distal phalanx of the fingers. So it's gonna come right up to here, and then we're gonna have ex full extension of the wrist. So the wrist goes back, and the fingers come forward at the MCPJ, which is the knuckles, comes forward like so. So they call it a bit of a swan neck. So if you can see that on the video, that's it, brilliant. So the slab will come up here, extend to the distal phalanx of the fingers, and that's to protect the hand because generally when you put a volar slab on, it's because there's a fracture of the uh, metacarpal bones, uh, your classic punch injury, and so we have to protect that hand and those fingers. Okay, so we'll just pop that on now. And we measure again from the tips of the fingers down past the elbow crease to ensure we have enough stock in there. Just cut that. Okay, we apply that on. Again. Lovely. And then we again make a hole at the base of the thumb. Nice little hole. And now this time make sure we have lots of um, stocking net left so we cover all the fingers. I'm going to just, that's a bit too much, so I'm going to cut that down. So we don't do our cheese slice on this one, we keep it extended there so that when we finish the cast we will turn this back and you will just see the tips of the fingers. Okay, so now we're going to apply the soft band and again we'll go for the middle size. Okay. And again, we take the edge off just to make that smooth and so it sticks better. Right, you don't have to be um, to go right to the elbow crease because it's the hand that's fractured, not the wrist. So you can just bring it a little bit further down. And not be, it's not so important to extend it to the elbow. Okay, so double layer to start with and then every layer thereafter ends up having two layers on each round of application. So when you reach the palm, again you tear, just to bring yourself round there. You can then go back round the wrist on this one because the, it's going to finish down the end of the fingers. So now we're gonna extend the soft band all the way to the tips of the fingers here. 
seems like you're completely covering them but in a moment we fold this back just to see where we're at and we've lost the little finger so we're just going to cut that soft band away just on that edge okay and then we try it again and just make sure we can see the little finger because we need to make sure we've got a good cap refill on all the fingers and that we can see the circulation okay so we know that's now in the right place so we can get ready to apply our slab so if we just rest if you want to rest down for a moment just for comfort and we'll cut the plaster out just pop some gloves on so we're going to use the again the widest cast um, the 20 centimetres, not the 15, just so it um, completely covers the radius and the ulna. Again, covering the ulna completely so that it doesn't rub against the ulna styloid when the cast is on. But don't forget we're going volar side this time, so it's still going to come round the radius and ulna, but from the opposite side. Okay, so yes, yeah, so we'll measure... Again, just a centimetre, one to two centimetres shorter than the soft band. And the same for this end. Remember, it's going all the way up the fingers, like so. Okay, so now we can cut that out. Again, six to eight layers is plenty. Five, six. Cut that. <laughs> Okay, and this time when we make our little church door or arch, we don't make it just one centimetre away from the edge because this cast is extending up the fingers. So you may want to just re-measure again just to make sure you know where you're cutting. And there's the thumb, so we need to go either side of the thumb here to here. So that's where we need to do our cut, so I'm just going to keep that guide with my fingers so we're going to cut there and we're going to do the arch it tends to be about six centimeters from the end six to eight centimeters away from the edge of the plaster okay and then we still need to take the corners off because that's this side is where the little finger is going to be so we want to make sure we don't cover that up take all our corners off okay Brilliant. And then make sure we have a bandage at the ready. So the medium sized bandage would be good. And again, we need our little slab that's going to hold our bandage on. So have all your materials prepared before you wet the plaster so that you're ready to go. Right, open the bandage up ready. Okay, so we have all our materials ready. We can now wet the plaster. Just make sure you've got it ready and placed in your hands so that it's going to be easier for you to pop it on. So you fold it like a book, thumb, index fingers to hold the end, the rest of the fingers go around the back, and we then pop it into our lukewarm water, release all the bubbles, just squeeze the top, then squeeze the bottom of the plaster so that you haven't got drips, continual drips going across the floor. Okay, stretch it back out once you've done that, otherwise the plaster shrinks quite quickly. And then we're going to lay that round the thumb. Okay, that's fantastic. And again, it will go round the ulna and the radius but the main reason we're doing this is the volar is to protect the hand so bend at the wrist and then bend again at the knuckles so the fingers that remain straight but you get a nice indentation into the palm so make sure you keep smoothing that out so it fits right into the crease of the hand and then we can turn back the stocking and just shows all our distal phalanxes of all the fingers. And we can then turn the other end back. That's it, lovely. 
and you'll just keep moving, checking our position as the car starts to set. Fantastic. So full extension at the wrist and then we flex again at the MCPJ at the fingers. Okay, brilliant. Ready for the bandage. So two layers to start your bandage off. Put it full extension, release by 10% so you get the same conformity through the whole bandage. Okay, full extension, release slightly and round we go. And then we get the same nice, neat bandaging. You don't want the bandaging too loose, otherwise it will become loose very quickly. Especially with our plasters that end on staying on up to sort of at least 10 days before a fracture clinic follow up. So we want them to fit nicely. So twice over the thumb, just make another hole. Fantastic. You can always, when you're finished, make the hole slightly bigger if it looks like it's cutting into the thumb. You can do that on when you finish. And then this, I'm gonna cut it slightly because this size bandage, I don't want any creases, you know what I'm like. <laughs> okay, and then we can work our way, and you can actually do another one over the thumb as we work our way back down so you get a nice conforming bandage. Lovely. And we can then work our way back down. And this time our slab has got to, to hold the bandage down, needs to be on the palmer side because that's where our plaster is. Okay, that's fantastic, thank you. So we whip our securing piece. Hold it all out in one hand like that. Thank you, I'll take that. That then rolls on. Brilliant, smooth it off. Check your plaster, make sure it all conforms nicely and that it's nicely into that palm crease. That's great. Check it's sitting nicely. Brilliant. And that is your volar slab to protect the hand. Thank you.